A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. He spoke also this parable to certain people who were convinced of their own righteousness and who despised all others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed to himself like this, God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of men extortioners, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far away, wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Do you ever compare yourself with others and always pat your own shoulder because you are confident enough to say that you are much better than them? Or do you always consider yourself at fault in any conflict? Or are you the type of person who recognizes the goodness in you and thank God for it and at the same time you also recognize your limitations and is ready to ask for forgiveness and willing to get up each time you fall. In today's parable, Jesus tells about two people who went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. They pray in a different way. The Pharisee is convinced of his righteousness in the knowledge of the law and their ritual requirements, as well as their expertise on the 613 laws of Moses. And in his prayer, he thanked God for not being like the tax collector who is a sinner. On the other hand, the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes to heaven but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. It is so amazing for one who goes to the temple and pray and start enumerating to God the good things that he does because he feels that by obeying all the rituals, attending all the celebrations, and studying the laws, he feels the assurance that God will reward him, and these things will save him. It seems to me that this kind of prayer is not an honest one. A true prayer, the one desires by God, is to come to Him with our nothingness in front of Him. We strip off of our pretensions and hypocrisies and we are there to talk to God. First of all, to adore Him for everything He made that makes us who we are. And with all humility, asking for His forgiveness for all our weaknesses. And as His child, we ask His blessing to guide us and to give us the grace to get up every time we fall because of our sinfulness. No wonder why Jesus praised the tax collector for his humility, admitting to God his sinfulness by saying, O oh God, 
Be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus concludes the parable by saying that the tax collector went home justified. True humility is simply being honest, first of all, with ourselves. We should not pretend to be who we are not. Too often in life, we are not honest with ourselves, and therefore, we are not also honest to God. The self-righteousness of the Pharisee is worth pondering on our part because maybe sometimes we think of ourselves as better than the others. Maybe some of us may think that since we are active in the church, we hold some important positions in the organization, we feel better than the others and we know better than them. And maybe we behave in such a way that others will really consider us as such. Today's Gospel, it says that it is not enough to know and be faithful in the church celebration and be active in the church. It is just one part of our being a Christian. There is still the second part, which is more important, that is, putting into practice the messages of the church celebration that we attended, like the Mass, the sacraments, and other sacramentals. In other words, the summary of the Christian commandment is love. St. Paul says, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. What does God require of us? Simply that we love as He loves. God is love and everything He does flows from His love for us. God loved us first and our love for Him is a response to His exceeding grace and kindness towards us. The love of God comes first and the love of neighbor is firmly grounded in the love of God. Prayer of Saint Teresa of Avila Govern everything by your wisdom, O Lord, so that my soul may always be serving you in the way you will, and not as I choose. Let me die to myself so that I may serve you. Let me live to you who are life itself. Amen.